I start by introducing what cold atoms are and what are the challenges, what are the, why do we need artificial gauge fields and then I move on to my work and I hope to uh, show you some very exciting kind of uh, excitations and also a route to high temperature superfluidity. So what people have come up is in, so you create a standing wave out of laser beams and you create nodes and anti nodes and these are electromagnetic fields. So think of electric field for example and you load atoms typically the first group atoms and these atoms have tendency to either like electric field or dislike electric field. So they go and settle in either nodes or anti nodes of this standing wave and now you have an artificial lattice. So if you want to tune the lattice spacing, you need to tune the wavelength of the laser. If you want to tune the depth of the lattice, you need to increase the intensity of the laser and hence you can control hopping amplitude and all that. You can also tune the interaction between the atoms and so on. So with this kind of uh, control, now you can emulate quantum systems and this is the atom part of the cold atoms and the cold part comes because you need to have it really cold otherwise they will fly away and also to have quantum mechanics you need to uh, go beyond below certain temperature and the successes of cold atoms are very much prominent so bose einstein condensate was predicted long ago in 1920s whereas it was realized experimentally in the cold atom context in 1990s 70 years after its prediction and i will talk about this later also in fermionic systems bcs bc crossover was you know, not very long ago uh, realized. So having told all this, it looks like, oh, these systems are very good and what else we need? However, there are problems with cold atoms. The main problem is, uh, you know, like cooling. So the kinds of temperatures we need are something like micro to nano to even pico Kelvin. That's extremely low temperature. And I'm not talking about that. But the other problem we need is, uh, we face is that these particles have to be essentially charged neutral otherwise they will repel and you cannot trap them and if you have neutral particles how do you emulate electromagnetic response for example if you want to study quantum all effect you need to apply magnetic field and if they are neutral particles they will ignore the magnetic field so then you need to come up with a way in which you tune an artificial magnetic field so one simple possibility is for example if you look at the nature of the coriolis force and also the nature of the magnetic force if you look at the nature of the magnetic and Coriolis force, they are very similar in nature. So the atoms don't mind, for example, in some way of saying whether they have mass and are in a rotating frame or they have charge and they are in a magnetic field. So by tuning omega, you can, so you can actually uh, create an artificial magnetic field. This method has its own uh, disadvantages to create non-homogeneous magnetic field and all is difficult and since the charge to mass ratio is uh, are involved the high, achieving high strengths is a difficulty. So people have come up with another way wherein you uh, create a magnetic field artificially. The way it is done is what happens to a charged particle when it goes in a magnetic field? It becomes a geometric phase. So the idea is you take these neutral atoms, they have their own hyperfine structure. You couple this in uh, to electromagnetic fields which are very cleverly engineered and along with lasers in such a way that these atoms also pick up the same geometric phase. So in that way you can uh, bring in artificial magnetic fields. And there are uh, people uh, have produced this, they have punched in vortices in, uh, in a cold atom gas using these artificial magnetic fields. And uh, one may wonder what happens in this hyperfine manifold, the ground state is doubly degenerate. Then uh, it has been shown that what you get is not, so if, uh, in place of A, which whose curl is B, magnetic field, uh, the usual A is the magnetic vector potential where the components commute. Whereas if you have the ground state as degenerate, then you will find uh, non-abelian gauge fields. So where the co components of A do not commute. So uh, it also was shown in uh, uh, some work that these kinds of gauge fields, non-abelian in nature, have some interesting effects in case of bosonic systems. So what we focus on is fermionic systems. So they will characterize the gauge fields uh, as follows. So this is the nature of the coupling where the spin and the orbit 
which is the linear momentum get coupled and the strength of the uh, coupling can be different in different directions. So, we have studied it over uh, different kinds of couplings and the kind of interactions we consider in this fermionic system, it turns out that contact interaction in the singlet channel is good enough to capture interest in physics. And uh, there is problem with contact interaction, there is ultraviolet divergence, you need a cutoff and all that. So, effectively you need to uh, look at this quantity which is minus 1 by S wave scattering length. If it decreases, it means attraction is increased. With that, uh, I will focus on what we have done for the one particle problem in the gauge fields, two particle problems and then the many body physics with non-interacting gas and an interaction and we study the ground state, we study the excitations, we study the transition temperature and all that. Uh, one thing to note is that we study in units where mass of the fermions, Boltzmann constant and Planck constant are, are unity. And in uh, most cases for uh, lack of time, I will focus on uh, symmetric coupling where all lambda x, lambda y, lambda z are equal. So, in the one body problem, the main outcome is that while momentum is a good quantum number, spin is not a good quantum number. You need that, that place is taken up by helicity. So, we have plus and minus helicity band which disperse like this and the plus helicity band have a lot of states which are degenerate and that plays a very interesting role as we see. If you look at the two body problem in gauge fields, you can formulate it. Uh, so, this is the secular equation where you find the energy of the state for a given scattering length. So, these results are not specific to the spherical or the symmetric coupling. We have shown that the, in general when you have gauge coupling of any sort, it always amplifies the attraction and helps formation of bound state. And what is the understanding behind this? See the attraction is in the singlet channel. So, the relevant quantity to look at is what is the singlet density of states, density of states in the singlet channel. And what really matters is what is the nature of the singlet density of states at the band bottom. So, if you look at three dimensions, in three dimensions the density of states goes as square root of energy, whereas in two and one dimensions it is constant or one over root energy. In presence of gauge fields, it turns out that it modifies the infrared singlet density of states and that is the main uh, you know advantage in amplifying the attraction. This is also very similar to what Cooper prop, Cooper of BCS. Uh, solved. What he showed is in presence of a Fermi surface, this is an artificial problem, a Fermi surface is there which blocks the low energy states. So, instead of root E, it starts from some constant value. So, the low energy density of states is not root E, it is leading term is constant. In presence of Fermi surface, however small, two interacting particles which are shown in red forms a bound state for arbitrarily small attraction. So, we also with this uh, simple model that we construct how the formation of bound state forms uh, for, as a function of the nature of low energy density of state, we also understand the Cooper problem. And what happens if this all the result I showed was at zero momentum, if you increase the momentum, we plot out the dispersion, we find anticlimax, which is that it does not matter how strong the attraction is, one day or the other you will reach a stage where when the moment of when the momentum is large enough of the pair the bound state dies. And why does this happen? Again we understand based on the singlet density of state. If you look at a center of mass momentum and then a k and minus k from there, you see that the two states which participate in the bound state formation are almost a triplet. There is a very little singlet component in it and hence the singlet density of states is depleted and hence there is uh, no bound state after a particular cube. And now we venture into many body physics. The initial signs itself are very auspicious. Even if you take a non interacting system, as a function of lambda, which is gauge coupling, you find that the topology of the Fermi surface actually changes from that of a sphere to that of a torus. And we also work out what happens in presence of a trap, a quadratic trap. We find that there are characteristic features which will be good once, one, one day or the other, when experimentalists actually get to this system, they can immediately see the shape of the cloud and uh, they can say that oh, they have actually generated this kind of term. Now a quick introduction to what happens when you introduce interactions. This slide is without gauge fields. 
so for if you consider a fermionic gas which is interact attracting when the attraction is weak when the attraction is weak okay this is non interacting particle when the attraction is weak okay there is pairing but the bond length is much larger compared to the average interparticle spacing when you tune the attraction further when you increase the attraction the bond length decreases decreases and the fermions form pairs which are effectively bosons and these bosons both condense so this as a function of attraction is called bcs to bc crossover what happens to chemical potential at the bcs limit it's more or less the fermi energy and in the bc limit it is minus half of the binding energy of the pair and with this i will tell you what happens with the gauge field this is at a fixed weak interaction this is the non interacting chemical potential that i am showing and this is the minus half of the binding energy that i am showing what happens to the chemical potential as you tune lambda it does this so it starts from a bcs kind of a state and it nicely evolves to a bc state and this is at a fixed attraction it is not by this bcs bc crossover is not by tuning attraction it is tuning gauge field this is a new kind of gauge uh, bc that i will describe so we do a gaussian fluctuation theory what we do is we take the uh, quartic term in the hamiltonian we do a hubbard stratonovich transformation then we get the fermions uh, as quadratic terms we integrate out we get an effective action for bosonic fields and then we do meet the saddle point of that is mean field theory we consider gaussian fluctuations about that saddle point and we find that there are two kinds of modes one is a gapless mode which is a sound mode we calculate the speed of sound and then there is then there is a uh, gap mode which we call anderson higgs mode we calculate the gap and the interest thing to observe here is for large lambda in whichever graph you look in the insets and here all interesting properties like speed of sound phase stiffness or the anderson mass or chemical potential or whatever is the triplet content in the pairing wave function they all flow towards a universal value dependent universal in, in the sense they depend only on the gauge coupling they forget with what interaction they came up how the pairs were formed they forget the density of fermions only thing that remains is what is the rushbar gauge field and hence we name these uh, this bc which is formed at very large gauge coupling as rushbond bc or the particles the pairs which are formed there as rushbonds and if you look at uh, the standard bogolyubov theory of bosons which was worked out long ago by uh, uh, abrikoso etc then the chemical potential for that bosonic problem uh, depends on the scattering length of the bosons like that and the speed of sound has a very specific behavior we find a very similar behavior in our theory except that we have to do an anisotropic boson uh, 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 bogolyubov theory and what we extract out is the scattering length for interaction between two rush bonds it turns out that that scattering length again depends only on lambda and what is so remarkable about this that lambda is a parameter that enters the kinetic energy term in the hamiltonian and that is going to dictate what should be the effective interaction between the pairs that are formed that is uh, i guess very very uh, remarkable and then uh, we do a fluctuation theory at the normal state and then we go down in temperature and see where the susceptibility towards superfluidity diverges and hence we obtain the transition temperature and what is remarkable about this is that if you look at this this is very weak interaction limit but if you tune the gauge field you go to a very high transition temperature and this is plotted in units of tc by tf so this is to a significant fraction of fermi energy you can uh, raise the transition temperature and in a typical cold atom context which uh, may be having some 10 to the 4 to 10 to the 5 atoms trapped in a millimeter cube for that kind of densities you have fermi temperature of of order milli kelvin that's okay but uh, right now this this uh, fields have not this kind of gauge field configurations that i have talked about have not been realized we have, so theory is ahead of experiments here so it's an invitation to experiments to experimentalists to come up with a way in which this can be tuned either in a cold atom context or in a real material so that the transition temperature can go up so the conclusions are as follows we looked at the two body problem and we find that for in presence of gauge fields however small the attraction may be a bound state forms 
and we looked at the many body problem within mean field theory. We find that there is a new kind of crossover to be from BC state to BC which is not induced by the attraction but induced by the gauge field. We looked at the excitations. The excitations are very novel. They depend only on the gauge field. They have uh, at the very large lambda there is no information of what attraction they are and what uh, what is the fermion density and so on. And the transition temperature goes up with lambda. So that's all about it.